Hello there, welcome back to the Closet Historian. Please ignore the loud thunder and lightning possibly coming outside because it just started raining out there and we're uh, thundering away. We have evening thunderstorms here in Colorado, usually in the summertime, so we're experiencing that currently uh, quite a lot right now. Um, so ignore the thunder if you can hear that, but welcome back to the Closet Historian. Today I'm doing another sewing project. This is another video in my sewing my summer sewing series, I will put a card up to the video where I talked about what I was going to be making this summer in my projected plans. And of course, I mentioned that I would be making two dresses in the month of July in that video. And last week, I put up the video of me making that first dress. And right here on the last day of July, I'm hopefully going to be finishing the second dress that I had planned for this month. So really cutting it in on the wire there. But again, would I have made anything if I hadn't put it on the schedule like this? I really doubt it. So I'm glad that I'm still getting some sewing done. And I actually am really liking how this dress is coming out. You're, I'm talking to you here on day two, but I will go ahead and jump back in time to beginning this project yesterday afternoon. So let's jump on back. Here are some of the images that are inspiring me for this dress, as well as uh, my own sketch as well. I don't know if I remember to talk about those yesterday, but I will just put a few images here on the screen as well for you to see what I'm planning on making and what inspired me to make it this way. Here we are back at the blue drafting table as usual. I really ought to clean this table. It's got tape and paint and things going on, but you know, that's the authenticity of the, uh, the craft room here. So today we are making this little dress pattern. Um, so basically this is inspired by a lot of different forties dress, um, patterns and dresses I've seen online. It's going to be another dress out of rayon chalet. So I want to use that flowiness to my advantage by including some areas of extra fullness. So the bodice pattern actually does not need to have, funny enough, these waist darts. So we are going to have a front bodice pattern that has no waist darts on it. Um, now this is going to be a all in one sleeve here. So basically this is what it looks like on a person, but if you were to lay it out flat, this is what the sleeve looks like. Um, it's not sewn in, there's no seam here. It's just an extension of the front pattern piece, um, the seam here, or the uh, sleeve. So this is called a kimono sleeve or a dolman sleeve um, in fashion. Of course, actual Japanese kimono has have very different sleeves, but this is just what this style of sleeve was named kind of in the mid-century. It was very popular in the 1940s and 50s, this style of all-in-one sleeve like this. Um, and because it doesn't require a separate piece, it's good if you don't have very much fabric because it doesn't require a separate piece. It does, it, it's less uh, time consuming and fiddly to sew because you're not working on setting a sleeve in, which some people really don't like. I think this, if you really hate setting in sleeves, puff sleeves are the answer uh, to your life. Cause of course a perfectly smooth set in sleeve, you have to deal with making sure it fits perfectly. Whereas a puff sleeve, if there's extra fullness, it just goes to the top and it's less of a hassle. Um, but enough about puff sleeves. For once on this channel, we're going to be doing a different kind of sleeve finish today. So this is just gonna have these kimono all in one sleeves. So the first step here for me is going to be taking my regular bodice block front and back and making it into a kimono sleeve pattern. So the first version of this um, is not going to be with these gathers up here. I'm just going to make it so that uh, I have my regular. Now normally I would have, if you were to imagine the basic block in here, normally I would have a side dart in a dart from the bust, right? Like this pattern here. Now the way you create a kimono sleeve out of this pattern is to move this dart up into the armhole. So like last time, we will cut through our darts to find the apex, swing this dart closed and have that fullness open up up here into the armhole. And that is what gives the pattern the ease through this area for you to move around and have mobility with this style of sleeve. So we will, and by we, I mean me as usual, <laughs> I will close this dart open it up into the armhole and then draw on the kimono style sleeve. And that will be the first modification we do to this pattern. I'm actually gonna cut one of those, just a basic kimono sleeve pattern with maintaining the waist dart. I'm gonna cut one of those out of this kind of poster board card I use because I do use a basic kimono sleeve um, pattern quite often. So it'll just have the um, waist dart intact still but it will not have any other darts. So we've eliminated one of the darts by incorporating it into this sleeve area. So this will be the like basic kimono sleeve pattern that I will use all the dang time. I'll put some of the dresses here on the screen or tops that I've used this 
style of pattern for. I've used it so much. Um, again, it saves time. You don't have to sew a sleeve. So you're just like, uh, it's skipping a couple of steps. It means you can make a dress quickly, which as we know, I'm all about the economy of time here on the channel and or am lazy. Um, so that's something I like to use all the time. So I'm gonna cut one out of card and then I will sh trace that again and we will use that as the basis to start to make this pattern. The only difference between this like basic kimono sleeve and this guy is that we also eliminate the waist dart. We're gonna put that fullness up here. So again, we will be taking this dart to the apex, swinging this one closed and opening this up up here in the shoulder. So it's a lot of dart manipulation today. We're gonna be closing this dart entirely, turning it into a kimono sleeve, and then this waist dart will become gathering uh, fullness up here at the shoulder seam. So that's all the modifications we have to do the front. For the back, I will show you how I use my new kimono sleeve pattern front to draw a kimono sleeve onto the back because you're not dealing with the bust in the back. You don't have to make as many modifications to this guy. You can keep your waist dart and then you just um, add on the sleeve and I'll show you how I do that once we get to that point. So um, this is the dress I will be making today and tomorrow or this week, basically. I'm trying, I'm gonna try and make it today and tomorrow. Um, so I have to first, of course, make our pattern though. And then of course we have this skirt to contend with as well. Um, we'll be doing the bodice first because it's a little more intensive. This skirt, I'm planning on just using my basic pencil skirt pattern. My pencil skirt pattern, you can have ones that come in, you know, that are like more like kind of 50s pencil-y. This one I have, uh, my basic base pattern, the one I have cut out of card is straight. So from the widest, once this curve meets the widest point, it just is straight down. So I'm gonna be using that straight cut pencil skirt to make this skirt pattern. The only difference that will be, I will trace the full front and then I will be adding in a area of fullness that will be gathered down to the waist here. I can't decide if I want to gather or pleat it, but it'll be somehow arranged here at the side front. And then I'll be creating a long bias, probably cut if I can, depending on how much fabric I have, bow or sash that I will also tack on here at the waist. Uh, I think I will make, they put this on at the very end as opposed to sewing it into this seam. I will sew it on at the end. So if in the future I decide to remove this sash, I can um, for a little bit of a different look or for laundering or any particular reason, I want to have this sash be removable possibly. Um, and then in all ideal, I would love to make a matching belt, but I do need to buy some belt kits and cover buckle kits because I'd like to make a matching belt for that last green dress I made too and for this one. Um, so I don't always have to wear it with a contrasting belt. Um, I can have matching belts, which is much more 1940s accurate anyway. Um, again, that I always care about accuracy. So that is my long-winded explanation, introduction to the pattern um, I'm gonna be doing today. And I will start, of course, as always, by tracing this bodice front block. Okay, so what I have done is I have traced my pattern. Again, I'm using little thin markers to do this just so that everything is super visible on camera, but I recommend doing this in pencil for the most accurate thin line, of course, um, but just, and because you can, then you can erase it, um, but I'm just using markers so that you guys can see what I am doing. So I've traced the bodice block front here, and then I've drawn some lines. So let's talk about those. Again, I have just come up straight from each dart to find my apex point, and then I have connected one dart leg to that point, another dart leg to that point, and then I have opened up a line up here in the armhole. So this, you're just kind of doing mid armhole here. Um, you wouldn't want to come all the way down here or all the way up here, I don't think, just kind of in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to do now is cut out this pattern piece, and then I'm going to cut along these straight long lines and then also along this line, but not all the way through this point. So I'll show you what that looks like. Again, we're gonna hinge the pattern so we can do our slashing and our spreading as is now usual here on uh, these pattern drafting segments. Okay, I have realized I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I didn't need to slash this line yet because we're not actually doing anything to the waist dart just yet. I got, I got too excited. Um, so we don't need to worry about this one yet, but I will later, so I will be using that slash. Um, this dart will be moving up here once again, um, but this one is the one we're contending with right now, this side dart. So again, I've slashed through my side dart to the apex point. I've slashed to where I want that fullness to open up. And so I'm just going to take this piece, again, we didn't cut all the way through here, and I just slide this little friend closed. So now I will tape along this line smooth, and then anything that's like underneath is excess, I will cut that off and I will fill in this entire area with paper. So I'm gonna fill in this triangle, but also leave a lot of extra paper up here too, so that we can draw in that big kimono sleeve. 
All right, now that I have taped my pattern piece back down to another area of paper, um, this is just where that dart got opened up. So we swung that fullness from here up into here instead. And now we have this space. And you can kind of see how if you were to go out from here and down to here, it would create a square. And that is a good thing because essentially that's kind of what we're gonna be doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a uh, sort of half inch up, not half inch, a quarter inch up from here um, and just like ease that into this line. So um, mark a quarter inch up and then connect that through here and then draw it, extend it all the way out. So put a line all the way up through there. So that's what that looks like. Just came up quarter inch here and then connected that and extended it along. Um, so now we're going to curve up from this, where we closed the dart before. Oh, sorry. So where I closed the dart, this dart point here, I will still use that as a reference. I'm going to use that as kind of where from here, and then I'll probably come out maybe, hmm, let's say, I'll probably come up like an inch from there, curve that in here, and then that is where my sleeve will be. So I'm just going to uh, <laughs> try and figure out how to do that on camera, basically. So I've drawn in we're over here, just so we know positioning where we're um, we're at here. This is at the under the armhole. So this is the side seam at the underarm. Oh, as you can see, marker over tape, little smear. So how I'm figuring out where I want this kimono sleeve to kind of end into the side seam, you can go lower, and that's almost considered a dolman sleeve, I believe, when it's like much lower, like almost a bat wing kind of style. I'll put an image of kind of top made in this way. Um, but I don't want my arm hole, arm area sleeve to be that deep down into the side seam. So I'm just gonna come down, I think this is, I'm just gonna use this as a marking point. Um, so it's about a little over two inches down is where that dart closed. And I'm just gonna use that as my marking point. I'm gonna come out two inches from that as a base I'm um, just sketch that uh, or draw that line in two inches out from this side seam. And then I'm going to come up just so I can have a bit of a curve here. I'm going to come up three quarters of an inch is what this is from that point. So three quarters of an inch up and then this rectangle, basically I'm going to make a curve going from there into here. Um, so I will draw that on. Okay, I have changed my mind. I'm only going to come up about a half an inch because I just didn't want that to be too much of a curve. Um, so I'm coming about half inch for, up from that and uh, connecting that with a little curve here. You wanna leave a lot of this uh, perpendicular to what your slim sleeve hem is gonna be. That way you don't have to do a facing or anything here. You can just turn this in. Um, as long as the, you know it's a straight line, um, you can just turn that in. So you can like surge this edge and then turn it into hem it as opposed to having to do a facing or line this garment or anything like that. I know many people prefer to always line things. I'm not one of them, so. Um, I just prefer to hem it and turn it in. So that's what I'll be doing here. So I actually just ended up coming about a half inch and just drawing this curve in. I was trying to figure out a standardized way to explain this. Um, my pattern drafting book doesn't even show this step. They're just like, draw a line where you want. And it's like, okay, I'm trying to figure out a way to tell you the way I decide where to draw that line because even the pattern drafting book doesn't tell me where to do it. Um, but in general, I'd say, half inch up from the dart, original dart spot, and then two inches out for a short sleeve. I mean, you can extend this line too, all the way and you can extend this line all the way and like do a long sleeve like this too, if you wanna do. Um, I just never have, um, I just always do short sleeves. But I'm now gonna connect this up to here um, just by drawing it straight up. Okay, so I've drawn a line, this first one here, straight up using that two inch two inches from the side seam as a guide. So straight along up here. Um, and then I've just added a half inch at the top here and then ease that back down. So this outer line is gonna be my edge of the pattern piece. Uh, basically I just am doing that to extend the length of the sleeve just a tiny bit, not necessarily under the arm um, where I don't want any additional bulk, but just uh, to make it a little bit more fluttery in the end here when we have the finished garment. Um, of course you can come out much further, you can curve this if you want, so you can have a curve up into here. That's a pretty look. You can curve it all the way into a circle, which is a different sort of look. You can do all kinds of different things with this. Check the internet, you know, the internet will tell you how to do almost anything, um, probably including different kimono sleeves. But um, that's just how I've achieved 
this sleeve shape as I I came up along here those that same two inches that I came out originally to find my curve drew a line along here put a half inch out and connect it back down and then this is going to be of course it'll be turned in a half inch which is why two inches is good um, because it gives you plenty of space to turn that in and hem it when you want to so this is the, the front kimono sleeve bodice I will just cut this out here and then I'm actually going to trace this onto card paper so that I have a official version that I can trace all the time when I do this pattern because I do make this one quite a lot. So here is my basic kimono sleeve bodice front. As you can see, my waist art is pretty massive on my pattern, um, and it remains so, but it's a very T or square shaped pattern, this one. Um, but I just wanted to cut a copy out, of, copy out of card so that I can use it quickly in the future, and I'll just trace this and modify this from now on as the same way I would um, with my block pattern. If I know that I want something with a kimono sleeve, I will just use this as my base instead of my basic block because it's nearly the same. It's just modified to have that sleeve. So um, I will now take our original piece of paper pattern that I just made um, and I will use this slash I got excited about earlier and I will make another slash up here into the, this is the original shoulder seam of our block pattern. That's still, you know, this is kind of nice because you can see how the block is you can see where it is still within this guy whereas on this you can't really see where the block was anymore but on this one i'm just going to take from the apex up into this shoulder area i'm going to cut a, a draw a line from there and then slash into that so that i can hinge this dart that i already you know got excited and slashed earlier i'll take the tape off here and sli um, slide this one closed and that open that fullness up here into the shoulder okay so i have my waist dart line uh, slashed up to the apex point here and I have a slash to up here in the shoulder I basically just drew straight up from where the apex is you can see it's like along this line of dots and numbers um <laughs> so I just drew kind of straight up from the apex into the shoulder line here so this is about an inch and a half um, up there and I'm just going to as usual swing this dart closed so I'm going to get rid of all that fullness it's all going to open up up here in the shoulder line so we're starting to get a wacky looking piece again which uh, is exactly what we want here so I'm going to tape this line shut and fill in that top area with more scrap paper all right so this waist dart is now closed and all that fullness has been moved up into the shoulder area this is what's going to be gathered down into this little area so uh, all this fullness is going to be collected into some gathers here at the shoulder and there will be no darts a smooth waist how how rare in my sewing but uh it'll be nice to have to not you know usually you have to sew four darts on the front bodice piece and this one i have to sew no darts on this front bodice piece so that'll be nice um i've just connected these two uh points here with a straight line and i will cut that off and then the front pattern piece will be done so i will go ahead and label it and all that jazz and then we will move on to doing the back Okay, so as usual, I have just traced my bodice back onto a new piece of alphanumeric paper. I've marked the 5 8 so this is the actual center back line. This is the extension for putting a zipper in or what have you. I have my dart here, and I'm just going to show you how I'm penciling in this kimono sleeve for the back. So because we don't have, again, there's no bust to deal with. There's usually only one dart in the back. Sometimes there'll be a shoulder dart. Um, for me, I just have this one dart on my block. So... To add on a kimono sleeve to the back, it's easier in some ways because you don't have to have extra fullness for movement because you're not usually moving your arms behind you much. And if you can, that's some serious double jointedness that I don't know how to contend with. Um, so because we know this neckline, this point here, originally on our back and front block pieces, that matches up um, along the shoulder line. I can take my new kimono sleeve sort of block that I made and I know that this line here this neck is still the same, so that should line up. So I can line this um, 
neckline of the front piece up to the back. And as you can see, we have that quarter inch that we added um, is gonna still need to be added up here too. So if we connect that along here, sort of move this up and quarter inch. So uh, I've marked with a little dot here, a quarter inch up from that point, just like we had raised it on the front. So I'm just gonna line up this point and this point. I'm gonna use that to whoop, trace this top line. So I will trace this top line here and then I will come down a little bit basically. Um, now, of course, this doesn't line up down here at the bottom. So that's just how I'm gonna do the top. For the other bit here, I'm gonna take my pattern piece and line up the side seam because we know the original side seam of the block this was used for matches this one. So I'm going to take that line up the side seam from the point at the bottom to where our new kimono is. And then I will, oops, not easily while holding my phone, uh, trace this bottom line here and then go up just a tad. Um, so basically I'm gonna be connecting this point to the other one we just drew up here. So now I have, blah, now I have the curve at the side seam looking very similar to how the front um, is done. And I have the top here very similar to how the top is done. Now this distance, if you were to measure is less, um, it's probably like an inch at least shorter than the front one. Um, that's just how my pattern always works out. I'm not sure if that's the official thing, but it seems to work for me. Uh, I usually, you know, you have less fullness in the back than in the front to contend with, uh, I, I find, um, as a rule. So, um, of course, rules are meant to be broken. If your body is shaped differently, perhaps this is different for you. But for me, this is how it comes out. Now, something I forgot to mention in the front, but is also pertinent there too, is this is the shoulder seam. And in order to fold this hem over, man, my hands are dirty from these markers. Um, in order to fold this hem over and sew it down, you have to make sure that this is like the edge is squared. Um, so you're gonna line up the lines of this and like just make sure that this is perpendicular, a 90 degree angle, this line coming down. Um, and same down here, you want it to be 90 degrees. So if it's at a different angle, you won't be able to just hem the sleeve. So you wanna make sure it's square at both of those angles and then connect the line between them basically. Okay, so my back pattern piece here, I made a card version as well because I will use that in the future. I did just make a quick little back facing that's again, two and a half inches wide as I normally do for this back piece. I'm not doing, doing any changes to the neckline of the back. However, I do have on my drawing, I did modify the front neckline a tiny bit. So before I make a facing, I will do that as well on here. Um, so I just wanted to make it a tiny, tiny little V-neck, a very shallow V-neck. So I'm just gonna basically take this angle and clip off this last corner. So this is a tiny bit of a V in the front. And then I will go ahead and make a facing for the front piece as well. Okay, so I've just traced a front facing for this pattern as well. So we have my front, front facing, back, back facing, and then now I get to work on the skirt pattern. However, I am going to go grab a cup of coffee first and actually answer some of your guys' comments over on YouTube while I drink a cup of coffee and then I will come back and do the skirt pattern. All right, took a little break there. Um, probably too long of a break, but I'm back to do the skirt now. Um, so basically, again, this skirt is just gonna be my basic pencil skirt plus some fullness on the front to gather here. Um, a lot of times you'll see on 1940s dresses and patterns that this gathering um, is more of like a faux wrap style where it, the sash is like part of the gathering actually, or the skirt like comes in, I'll put a picture like this instead. Um, that's just a little bit more annoying to do uh, in my opinion. So I'm just going to gather the skirt and then have a separate sash like this for a similar-ish finished look um, without having to like hem the curved edge of a fold over thing, you know, basically I just, this is an easier way to achieve, in my opinion, a similar look. So I'm going to be tracing this pattern um, into a full front. So once again, I will trace this side and then this side, and then I will um, keep the darts on one side of the pattern. And then I will be splitting between the darts all the way down the pattern and then adding fullness. So I'll probably add 
maybe six inches or more, probably more than that. And then that all will be gathered in the area where the darts normally would be on the skirt pattern so that in the end it will look like this with darts on one side and gathering on the other. And then for the back, I'm just going to leave it um, the standard pencil skirt with the back darts and everything. So the back will be quite standard, but the front will have that extra gathering in there, which will allow a lot of movement to the skirt, even though it is a pencil skirt, because there will be that extra fullness in the front. But um, yeah, so it's a little, little pattern modification to add just some extra gathering, some extra fullness in the front for a more fun, flowy look with this rayon chalet that I'm using on this project. So the, I forgot to mention that the basic pencil skirt is sort of part of a standard block dress pattern or sloper pattern. Um, I'll put an image of a sloper pattern here. Look at my stained fingers. Good. I, I promise I've washed them several times. Uh, it's just stained from the markers. Um, washable, my arse, Crayola. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll put a sloper pattern here so you can see it involves the bodice, the skirt, and a standard sleeve. So um, again, I think you should get a sloper or a basic block pattern like this and size that pattern to fit you perfectly and then use the pieces like I am here in order to draft different dresses, different things in the future, basically. Um, that's just how I do my sewing and it's how I recommend others do their sewing as well. Um, once you are, you know, past the very beginner stages of sewing, I think it's the best way to uh, so because you know that everything will fit you each time because your sloper fits you. Um, but we all know about my soapbox about that. So, um, moving on, <laughs> this is my basic block skirt pattern. And unfortunately, because poster board only comes so wide, uh, this is actually only 27 and a fourth of an inches long. Um, so the skirt is only 27 and a fourth inches from here to here. Um, now I normally prefer my skirts to be 28 inches maybe. Um, I quite like longer skirts. 28 inches is how long my Malcolm Modes petticoats are, for example. It's more of a past knee length length, and that is what I prefer personally, just proportionally on my form. It's not like I have any weird insecurities about my knees or something. I just prefer that proportionally on my body. I think it makes my legs look longer. I think the proportions just look better for me. That's just my opinion, of course. Y'all can disagree if you should like. So because this pattern piece is only 27 and a fourth inches long, I did, I do have to add on a little bit more here. I will make this 28 and a half inches long. Um, that way I have that half inch to work with. Usually I will hem things with like not necessarily a really deep hem unless I'm working on something particular. Usually I'll hem things with a bias tape or rayon seam binding or just by itself. So I'm just gonna add a half inch onto this and then I'll decide later what, how I want to hem it basically. Um, I may just turn this one up and it might end up like 28 or 27. I don't, I don't really care. Um, to be honest, uh, I'm not really fussed about being particular about my hems, um, other than to make them look nice, but I don't really care if they end up a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. Eh, it's, I'm lazy as we know. Um, so I'm just going to keep continue tracing this and relengthening it. And then I'll show you exactly how I get rid of the darts on this side of the pattern piece and put gathering in there instead. All right. So I've cut out my skirt pattern here. This is the full again, the full skirt front, basically. This is the center front line here where I mirrored the pattern. And I've drawn in the darts so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And basically my plan here is to draw a straight line between the two darts on this side, all the way down to the hem. I'm going to cut these two apart. I'm gonna cut it apart here and add in, I'm thinking around six inches um, here, which will add, of course, six inches to my hem, which will make it easier to walk because this doesn't have a kick pleat or anything in it inherently. Um, so it'll be, uh, allow me to have a little more movement in this skirt. And then also, um, I won't sew in these darts. So basically I'm just going to ignore these darts other than to use this point as the start. Like I'll mark this on my fabric and I'll mark this point on my fabric. And this area of the skirt is where all that extra six inches will be gathered into. So like normally when you close a dart, it's removing this inch tapering down of fullness and removing this inch of fullness. So it's pinching in the skirt at the waist, basically. So the hip width here, and you have your waist up here. And obviously those are usually different measurements, not always, but um, for me, they are quite different measurements. So this is what allows it to curve over the body, over the hips, up into the waist. 
Um, so this, normally this side would be removing these two inches um, from this general area. Instead, I'm gonna have an added additional six inches. So that six inches plus these two are, is all gonna be gathered into this amount of space, um, which would be a lot if it was like a thick fabric, if it's using something like a brocade or a twill even, like a thicker cotton twill, I would not put this much gathering in, but because it's a lightweight rayon chalet, everything should be fine. Um, but like lightweight rayons, uh, cottons, even like a uh, sheer cotton or a silk, this should this much uh, fullness should be fine. But you know, could be famous last words, we'll see. So I'm just gonna split this down this line and add in a section of about six inches of extra fullness here. Okay, so we can see that my original, what my pattern normally looks like is on this side and then this is much wider now, of course, I've added in that section of about uh, we're not about six inches, six inches. And then I will gather that all down from this point to that point in the final skirt, which of course we will see during the sewing portion of this video. Um, other options for similar looking designs are to do like, to do this as a gourd skirt and have it flare more on this side than this side, to put a huge godet in there. A godet is just like a triangle shape, um, extra section. Um, of fabric, you could put a godet in here. For me, the reason I want to just do it this way is because my hem stays straight, which makes it easy to hem as is, you know, my fave. So <laughs> that's kind of the reason I'm doing it this way. And I'm hoping it will still come out looking very 40s and cute and have enough flair to it that gives it a little something extra than just a basic straight skirt. So now I have my front skirt pattern piece as well as my bodice pattern and I will just trace my normal back. I'll just trace a paper copy of this pencil skirt back and make sure it's the same length again because this one the poster board was even shorter so this one's only 26 so I will just make sure the hem is the same length and then I can start cutting this all out of my lovely tropical print rayon. this dress currently um, out of this lovely tropical brown and this piece was just too big to arrange on my table to cut it out so I've actually come out into a blank floor that I can use so the thing about brown or silk um, anything slippy really is that you really do have to be careful to make sure that you know things aren't completely skewed so the fabric isn't being pulled or uh, misdirected in any way so you want to make sure that like underneath here isn't taut or pulled around in any weird way. So I just wanted to make sure my grain lines aren't doing anything funky. So I've come out here where I can lay the fabric fully flat and not have any weird tension going on from it hanging off my table and things like that. So I've come out here to lay it flat and cut the front skirt properly. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out the skirt front laying flat out there on the floor so I could make sure that it wasn't moving. As you can see, as soon as you start 
you know, moving it around. The fabric wants to move out of its bounds. So I've got it pinned back again. Basically all I've done here is pinned the pattern piece onto the back side instead so that I can draw some markings on. I went ahead and drew in my dart points just using a Prismacolor pencil here, um, which is, you know, you should use a chalk pencil, but I prefer these and I have them laying around. Um, so I just marked dot dots onto the skirt while it's all pinned like this. Um, if you, I prefer to pin the whole thing down again so I know that they're going where they're supposed to be. If I just pin this top area, a lot of this moves around and maybe these points won't be exactly where they're supposed to be. So I like to have the whole thing pinned back when I'm using a slippery fabric like this one because this is, you know, rayon is a slippery beast and it will come, it will travel where you don't want it to. Um, so I have uh, the darts marked on the side, but I have to mark, this is that six inch um, bit of extra foam so I added to this side, which I want to gather between where the darts originally were. So I've got that dart point marked here and then the part from the other dart marked here. So this is where my darts would have been on this side had I not added this huge section of fullness. And now I'm going to be adding gathering stitches and gathering that down to that like three inches that would have been where the darts were. So I wanted to make sure I mark those points on here so I know where to put my gathering stitches in. And then I will hold it up to my regular pattern piece, basically, my regular cardboard one to once I have it gathered to see if I have the size right. And I will show you that when we get to that step. But right now I'm just going to take everything off of the pattern, unpin everything, go ahead and serge all the raw edges here with this white thread that's already set up nicely. So I'm just going to serge all my raw edges of my pattern pieces and then I will start sewing them together, um, probably starting with these darts, of course. Okay, just as I'm doing some more marking on these pieces after I surge the edges, you'll notice I don't surge every edge um, of my pieces, and that's because if something's going to be encased in a facing, I won't usually surge that. Um, this is probably going to be folded twice to hem this area, so I also didn't do surging here just because it's going to add bulk this thread, um, and that's just areas where I don't want that to be if I don't have to. Um, so this is the front bodice piece here. This is the neckline right here. But I'm just going to be putting the gathering stitches in and I just wanted to make a note. So this mark here I decided um, on the pattern. You know what? I have to get the pattern back up. Hold on a second. Pattern piece on top of the fabrics you can see. So this is where that original line that I drew up to create this fullness or to move this fullness up here. That was where that original line was drawn. So that's just where I put my marker here. I'm going to gather from that point over to here. This is the end of that mark again, but I that is supposed to close up completely. So that space is actually going to fit into this amount of space on the next seam. So what I just did here is I measured an inch and a half in from this side. That's how I found this point. And all this gathering will cinch down to this amount of space so that this goes away, closing that fullness, allowing everything to look like it's supposed to. Um, of course, this is another one of those ones where like it looks a little bit crazy until I start putting it together and then you will see why this wide bodice piece is perfectly fine for what we are looking to do. So I will go ahead and put two rows of gathering stitches in here, same on the other side. And then for the back pieces, I'm going to sew the darts. I'm going to sew the facings together here. And then I'm going to sew the darts on the skirt pieces and put the gathering stitches into the skirt front waist section that we added as well. So I'm going to do all of that now, and then I'm going to call it a night and go up and go to bed, uh, you know, sleeping. It's a great idea. Um, I'm not very good at it, but I'm trying to get better. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of sewing and then I'll be done for tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 
don't remember where I left off last night. Um, it is the next day here. Here is the skirt sitting on top of the skirt pattern here. Um, basically what I've done is I sewed the darts in to the, um, for the skirt front uh, on the one side and then the other side has those that gathered section. So what I've done is just uh, sewn the two lines of gathering stitching in and then I have pinned the pattern. This is the like six inch plate or like section of ease or um, fullness that I added. So I've pinned the darts closed and that section closed. So if this skirt were normal, like the other side, with just darts, and I had sewed the darts, this is what length it would be when done. So this is the length from here, the center front to the side, that I need the skirt to be. So I basically just pinned all that closed and laid the skirt down on top and then gathered the section that I had determined I wanted to gather um, to fit the size of the skirt as it would be were it just normal with its darts. So this is the length I need it to be. I've just gathered the section down to fit so that this matches up with the end of the skirt pattern here and then just tied off these gathers so that I can have them chill here until I put the other skirt pieces on and sew the side seams of the skirt here, which is what I will go ahead and pin on and do next basically. Okay, so what I've done here is I've put my gathering stitches between the two markers on the front bodice shoulder area, and then what I'm doing is I'm actually laying it on top of the card version of the basic kimono sleeve, so this one doesn't have that huge dart here, and of course we want this to be the same as this piece would be, despite us putting that extra fullness in there. So this shoulder seam needs to be the same length as it would be on the standard kimono sleeve pattern, but I have this extra gathering in here. So we're gathering everything down so that this line fits. Um, so now I've just basically gathered this section, tied it off um, for now, so that it is the length of the top shoulder seam of the kimono sleeve bodice standard one. Um, so that's basically how I've done that. I'm gonna do the same for the other side, and then I will sew the side seams and shoulder seams of the um, dressed together. So these are the back pieces here and I will just go ahead and sew those on at the under arm and side seam and also at the shoulder. So I have sewn, this is actually the, if you imagine this is the sleeve, this is the side seam, this is the back piece here for uh, the bodice, and this is the front here. It's all very complex with this uh, pattern making it super busy. But so because there is this curve under, like right in the underarm of a kimono sleeve like this, you, as always with curves, have to clip into this curve to allow it to sit properly. As you can see, you can't even like iron it you know, well, you can iron the straight part of the seam, but once you get up into this little curve, it's a problem. So you have to clip into this seam. Um, you always have to clip your curves, both um, curving in and curving out. So I'm gonna have to put little slices in here and remove 
little triangles of the fabric. Now underneath the arm is a pretty like high stress area for a garment so you don't like you wouldn't want of all the areas you have to clip into it's a bummer that it's here. Um, so there are two methods um, that I know of really uh, that are the main ways of securing this area even though you have to clip into it because you indeed have to clip into it for it to lay nicely. Um, and the first, uh, you sew the seam first and then the first method is you clip into this area you press everything this will be like uh, not one ribbon where you can see how it doesn't want to lay there because it needs to be clipped. Uh, you press the seam allowance open properly and then you do a little tiny line of almost like edge stitching top stitching along each side to hold that down open and there's a couple extra lines of stitching in there to secure it. Um, also a lot of times you will see people recommend you sew over this area again along the same stitching line so I guess start with sewing a small section over the curve again right along right on top of the original stitching line so that it's secured twice um, and then you clip the curve press it open stitch each side of the seam allowance down jute, jute. Um, and then I have seen the other method is to after you've clipped this area because of course you're clipping into the surging you're clipping into the fabric there's gonna be raw edges of fabric here which are likely to fray you can actually surge the edge again once it has been clipped and hold it open. Um, I think I'm going to do all three of these things. I'm going to stitch over this line again. I'm going to clip my curves, press them open, and do top stitching on either side of the curve. And then I will try and surge the clipped edge as well. Um, of course, I will show you what each step looks like as I go through. I'll try this one side first, and if it works, I will do the other side seam the same way. So uh, I don't normally, as we know here on this channel, I am lazy. Uh, normally I'm making dresses out of cotton or like even cotton sateen which is a thicker cotton and I don't worry about the fabric fraying really I don't worry about this area coming apart on something that's like a more sturdy fabric so I normally don't even worry about this I just clip my curves and keep going um, I don't really normally worry about this but because I'm trying to you know have better habits I will go ahead and reinforce this seam uh, in all those many ways um, so that it will hopefully be like, you know, more heirloom sewing will last a lot longer. So I will go ahead and start doing that. So it's probably going to be hard to see, but you can see a little bit of back stitching there. And then I, you know, didn't sew exactly on top of the seam, which is unfortunate. And then a little back stitching here. So I've just reinforced this little curve and now I will go ahead and clip the curve and then press this seam properly open. All right. So I have gone ahead and clipped out little triangles and you can see that cuts right into here. And when you press it open, you can see how much it opens up, how much space it really needed to have this seam be on proper curve. So now I'm going to finagle this over on the machine and try and put a line of stitching holding these little triangles down, basically, all along here. That top stitching will show on the outside, but again, this is underneath my arm, and it's a busy pattern. No one will ever see it. And then I will flip this other seam allowance onto the other side and do the same on that side as well and see how that looks. Okay, so from the wrong side, you can see that looks like this. There's just a line of stitching holding down the seam allowance on either side and then from or the, from the wrong side did I say the right side or the wrong side? Anyway. Um, and then from the right side out there's just these two little lines of stitching along the seam um, this will show I mean it's going to be under my arm no one needs to be looking at my armpit that closely it should be fine um, so I'm going to clip off all these extra threads and then I will do the same treatment to the other side seam on the other side okay so hopefully you can see what I mean by surging and just like having the blankness be in between. Hypothetically, you should surge, uh, you know, right down next to this edge of the stitching, and then the excess will just cut off, get cut off, and then the rest of this um, will be encased in thread. But my serger actually doesn't have a blade on it right now. It's, uh, the blade is broken, so I can't slice off anything. So it would have been like bound up in there, and that would have created a little bit of bulk. That was too much, I think. Um, so mine has these little empty triangles in here, but I still think. This is much more than I normally do, so I think this should be fine. Um, and now that the bodice is all together, I can go ahead and sew the skirt onto it. Um, and I will be putting in a twill tape in that seam as well, just to add a little bit of extra security because I have some here. So I will go ahead and do that next. I believe I just said that I'm going to sew the bodice onto the skirt, but actually what I'm going to do first is put the facing onto the neckline. So I'm going to do that before I attach the skirt because it's always easier to do bodice things with just a bodice than it is with a dress. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 
neckline facing sew that on and then I will probably do some edge stitching clip all this curves again so everything will lay nicely do some edge stitching make it look all pretty up here with the facing even tack this facing down to the shoulder seam and then actually I'm going to be putting shoulder pads in this dress eventually because I have some sitting here and so why not but I'll put the facing on this and then I will actually hem the sleeves real fast as well um, and I'll just completely kind of finish the bodice before I attach it to the skirt that way I'll be just ready to do the zipper once I do that so I'll actually put the facing on first I've decided I just want to show you what I mean when I say I'm going to clip the curves on my facing as you can see here this line of stitching it's quite curved back here I literally just went along and clipped all this whole edge basically up until I left some space um, open so that I can finagle the facing when it comes time to do the zipper and stuff but I really clipped quite a lot because this is a close curved and then v-necked little area in the front so you want to clip a lot of this out of here so that this has movement has the room to lay nicely um, when they say clip your curves they mean it um, so just for those of you who are like what does she mean clip why are you cutting that um, it just makes everything lie a lot smoother on a curve when it has the room to close up on itself or open up if it needs to so these are my clipped curves on my neckline facing I will now go ahead and do some edge stitching um, which is just where you sew all this seam allowance down onto the facing um, so that there's going to be a little bit of line of stitching on the facing side of this and that just helps hold the facing folded under um, because of course it's not like a full lining so it won't stay unless you do a line of edge stitching which helps keep it smooth and then also tacking it down keeps it smooth so I'll go ahead and do some edge stitching now and then I will iron this Alright, so here's my neckline facing turned onto the inside. You can see this line of edge stitching that's holding that seam allowance down where I want it to. Um, basically, this just means that everything on the correct side is all nice and flat and holds that edge pretty well. You can see you can see a little bit of the front here on the back. Um, you could push that up really close if you wanted to, but I don't particularly mind. Um, this is where the front little v-neck is. So that's because it's sitting so nicely because those curves are clipped on the inside so it was allowed to sit nicely so all this nice curving is only because of clipping it on the inside like that so i will go ahead and i will tack this facing down to sew this bit of surged edge to this bit of surged edge basically tack that down there tack it down at the other side seam because this neck is so high there's not really a risk of this flipping out and doing weird things so i probably won't even bother tacking at the front this will be sewn down in the end to the back too so it'll be tacked here here and at the two shoulders so that should be enough if not i can always add a little tack somewhere else along the facing in the future if i should need to so i've just gone ahead and taken the sleeve here and i'm just folding it over uh, about a little under a half an inch maybe a centimeter and just folding it over twice and then i'm just going to go ahead and hand stitch this down with the same little long and short sort of weird hem stitch that i do on everything so I'm just going to go ahead and hand stitch this hem down and then I will do the same for the other sleeve as well. Alright, I've just sewn the bodice and the skirt together here. And um, I sewed that together first and then I additionally sewed on this piece of actually, um, this is like a thicker rayon seam binding. It's not, it's somewhere between a twill tape and a rayon seam binding. It feels like a, a mix of the two. Uh, it doesn't have the structure of a twill tape, of course. It just is like a plain weave, like a rayon seam binding, but it, is, it feels like a hardier rayon seam binding. Anyway, I just wanted to put a little tape in here just so there's a little bit more structure here at the waist for the weight of the skirt to hang off of, just because this is a lighter weight fabric and I want to have something in there, but I decided not to use that super heavyweight twill tape. I mean, it's not incredibly heavyweight, but it's heavier than this. I'm trying to justify my decision when I don't have to. You're not here. I'll do what I want. Um, so that's in there now. So now the bodice and the skirt are attached. And of course, that means I can press this seam open here, the waist seam, and sew the 
right sides together along the back because I always sew my back seam shut before I put my zipper in. So I will sew the back seam shut with like a large stitch length down the length of where the zipper will be. And then from there on to the hem, I will sew with a normal tiny like size two stitch length. And then I will sew the zipper in or basically iron that seam open, use that as my guide for ironing the back seam. And then, which I'm just noticing now, this side never got surged. What happened there? Wow, I must have been really tired last night because I never, oh no, maybe that, that's the hem, that's the hem. Okay, gosh, I was like, I am losing it. Anyway, sew this back seam together. Here we go, here we go, yes. Sew this back seam together, press that, and then I can start working on putting the zipper into this dress. All right, so this is my center back seam of the dress here. So as you can see, I have it open for like the length of the zipper, basically I just, I think this is a 24 inch zipper here that I'll be putting in. So I basically measured down from the top, um, you know, and like a, an inch after that is where, or above that is where my actual seam starts. So from here down to the hem, it is sewn with an actual, uh, you know, normal stitch length. And then from there on, I sewed it with a large stitch length, that, just basically basting it shut, ironed it, and then took the threads out. So this is all nice and crisp along that edge now. And I don't have to worry about folding it over and ironing it myself because ironing the seam is an easy way to do that. Um, and then I have, I have added actually just an inch of that super lightweight interfacing along the whole area where the zipper will be put in just to reinforce that area before I put the zipper in. And now I will go ahead and do that. So again, just explaining how I zipper here. Now that I have the folded or um, I guess folded and pressed seam open again. What I do is I flip it to the right side out. I'm just gonna take one side here and I've pinned it right close up to the teeth, right, right where the folded edge is, right up close to the teeth. And I will go ahead and sew that quite close to that little edge there. So I'll just go ahead and sew that along there. And then what I will do is bring this over here, match it up, pin that all along, and then I will sew against the teeth on that side to create a lapped looking zipper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew a small stitching line along this side to start. All right, so the first side of the zipper is all sewn down along the teeth there. And I just pull this side over and pin it so that this edge just covers that stitching. And I will sew along the zipper teeth here, just using my regular presser foot. I will show you when I get over there. Um, and then I will just sew that down and then that side will be done as well. So again, how I do my zippers is I line up the edge of the regular presser foot here. It's just resting along the zipper teeth. If you can kind of see where the zipper teeth are underneath. And this is, you know, a large amount of space. If I had a zipper foot, I could get much closer. But do I care? No, mate, not enough to change the zipper uh, or the presser foot here. So I've just got the needle moved over as far as it will go. Um, that's far enough for me. And I will just guide that along the zipper teeth all the way up to the neckline. And that will be my lapped zipper. And again, this is just how that looks when it's done. So we just have our zipper all in here now. And it can you know, work as, as uh, needed, basically. So up here, again, I just sort of fold the facing down so that it's all, you know, smooth. Sew that down in here, kind of finagle this all with some hand stitching um, and then put a, put, a, put a hook and eye up here as well. Um, but there's basically just that and then the hem to do and then the little sash bow situation. Um, so I'm gonna take the rest of the extra fabric I have for making this I probably won't cut the sash on the bias, even though I should, just because that would require a lot of piecing and say it with me, everyone, I'm way too lazy for that. So I'll probably just cut the bow and stuff on the straight grain. I don't think it'll make that much of a difference. No one will know but us. Um, so I will go ahead and stitch all this down and then I will work on the hem. All right, so I've just gone ahead and pinned my hem here. I just turned it up a half inch and then another um, inch here. Just going to go ahead and stitch that down with some little stitches along the edge here. And then I'm going to use these rectangular pieces here to make the 
little like loop and sash sort of bow situation that I'm going to pin onto the hip or sew onto the hip, tack onto the hip here once this is done. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I believe I said this yesterday, I'm going to attach that completely separately so that that can come off if it needs to in the future um, and the dress can be worn without the sash or with a different sort of embellishment or just washed without that if I need to. So that will be completely separate and tacked on at the end, but I will go ahead and hem this first and then I will make that. All right, I am now working on the little bow-like sash detail here. Um, basically, I'm just taking a length of fabric. I would say this is probably, oh, I don't know, two and a half yards long. Um, I don't know how much I'll end up using it, but I just sort of um, cut a long strip off the salvage. As you can see, this is the salvage here. And I have it pinned into a tube. So I just have this pinned into a long tube here. I'm just going to go ahead and sew along this edge and I'm going to sew the other end closed as well. So I'm just going to sew this into a long tube and then I will turn it right side out. Uh, clip, I'll clip these corners and then I'll turn it right side out, iron the whole thing smooth and then sort of finish the other edge as well. And then I will see how I end up wanting to loop and drape it over onto the dress here. This is, wow, that's a messy floor guys. That's a messy floor. Um, this is the dress here on our friend Donna. So here she is right now. You can see that gathering detail here that gathers up here on the shoulder as well. So this bow drape detail is going to be over here on this sort of side hip area. And I'm uh, just going to sew this little tube shut and iron it. And then I will show you kind of, I'll play with the placement over on the hip over there and decide exactly how I want to put this onto the dress. Okay, I'm kind of just going to take a couple of pins. Here is the like sash I made basically. Um, so this is probably just, again, two and a half yards long-ish and maybe was like a 12 inch wide piece, 11 inch wide piece. Um, just sewed that into a tube and then finished the ends off so they're all nice and then it's all nice and pressed. And so I'm just gonna kind of take this over to where, this is where you can't really tell here, but this is where the gathering is from about here to here on that skirt front. And so I'm just gonna pin this sash uh, next to that, next to the side seam, which is just here, and kind of play with it and see what I end up liking, um, kind of doing a little bit of a bow drape-ish kind of look. And so I will see what I end up liking. Oh. So after tacking on the little side sash, uh, I just did some hand stitches to sew that on. This is the finished dress on me. I'm really happy with how it came out. It fits just perfectly. Um, I really love this pattern. It does get a little bit lost in this lovely tropical print, um, but all the details we added to the pattern with like the shoulder gathers and the gathering on the skirt, things like that, they kind of get lost in this busy tropical print, which I do really love the print of this fabric, so it doesn't bother me too much, but I will probably make this same pattern again in another fabric, probably something solid, so you can see all the fun detailing with the shoulder gathers and the gathers on the skirt once again. But now, of course, I have this pattern. I can make it as many times as I want in any different fabric, which is what's nice about, you know, keeping all of your patterns and having a success with the pattern. It's, you can know you can have it in your arsenal from then on. So that is, I'll be filing this one away to draw upon again in the future, I guess, is what I'm, is what I'm trying to say here. I hope my explanations during this video were uh, more coherent than I feel they are right now. I haven't edited this video yet, obviously, as I'm filming this. And I feel like last night I wasn't the most articulate when it came to talking about the pattern drafting. So hopefully I was more articulate than I thought it was, uh, and it comes through as a little bit more understandable than I'm fearing it might not be. But if you have any more questions or clarifications you would like me to talk about, just let me know in the comments below. You can feel free to ask any sewing related questions, really. I will try and answer them if I can. I will probably do a sewing Q&A eventually, so I will ask for lots of questions then. But for now, if you have any questions about this project, do let me know in the comments and I will try and answer them as best as I can or point you to a better resource as I usually try to do because I don't really consider myself, even though I've been to school for this kind of thing, a total expert on all of sewing because there's just so much to know. But thank you as always for stopping by here today and coming on this sewing adventure with me and I will see you again here on the channel soon. Bye.